My name is Eli Desper. I'm a Ford Tree Level 2, and I'm from Tiger Rock Martial Arts in Brandon, Mississippi. Nice. Uh, how many national tournaments do you think you've been competing in? Uh, this year was nine. Number nine for you? Yes, nice. sir. All right, well, all right, so obviously we see the trophy here. What was your most memorable uh, part of this year's tournament? Uh, the most memorable part of this tournament was uh, definitely winning the Monroe Trophy. You know, I've, this is my third year doing it. And, you know, the, the first two years I made it to uh, round round two. And then this year I made it all the way. I won it and just having everybody, you know, cheer me on, having, you know, uh, family, parents, you know, friends, instructors, students, you know, it was just a really special experience. Nice. That was really cool uh, as, as on the instructor side of it as well to see you go from, uh, like I said, third year into it and then progressing further and further each year. Uh, definitely super cool to see uh, as an instructor as well. Which medals did you earn this time other than the Monroe? So I won uh, silver in board breaking. I won gold in sparring in the B bracket, and I won gold in forms in the A bracket for the fourth degree. Got you. So you got a gold in sparring as well as a gold in form yes, and then sir. the Monroe trophy right there. Yes, sir. Is it safe to say that form is your favorite competition or is sparring? Let me know. Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, form is super fun and I love form. I think it, I think it, might, it, it might have to be form because my form I feel like is more locked in more frequently than my sparring is. Sparring gets close whenever sparring, you know, you're really feeling it, but I feel it with form more often so yeah form probably and you know you're you're in charge of how your form goes yeah. sparring you got somebody else that has a lot to do with it as well what's your go-to tournament sparring strategy my go-to tournament sparring strategy would be to spend the first about 20 25 seconds of the round kind of watching and studying and making sure that I get their timing and their rhythm and things like that down and then after that is when I can progress and I can really you know put those tournament sparring moves that we practice so much into action. So that's normally the game plan for those uh, two minutes. Now everybody prepares a little bit different to get themselves ready for competition. What is something you do before competition to get yourself kind of focused, locked in, and amped up? Uh, right before competition, usually what I do is um, typically I'll have an earbud in, I'm listening to music, and uh, I'm trying to get super locked in. I'm not really talking to anybody, but actually for this tournament I changed that up a little bit. I, uh, before Monroe I was feeling super tired, so I went, I laid down, I took a nap, <laughs> got me feeling real good. And then, you know, I, was, I, was, I just made sure that I was loose. You know, that, that's a big thing that I've, that I've learned, just making sure that you're loose, making sure that you feel good, whether that is, you know, talking to a friend, talking to family, you know, talking to people that you're going to be competing against. Just stay loose and stay in the moment and don't, don't overthink things is a big nice. thing for me. What would be a top song on your playlist right now to, to get you pumped up pre-tournament? Top song, playlist, to get me pumped up. <laughs> Let me see. We're going to go with, this is going to draw some laughs. We're going to go with This Charming Man by The Smiths. I'll have to look that up. Good one to get the energy up. I'll have to, to Google that up. one. Who all went with you to watch uh, this event? It was my mom, it was my dad, and it was Abby, my sister. So now, uh, as you're getting a little bit older, teaching some full classes and different things as a certified instructor, how does it make you feel watching the students who you helped train go out there and win some medals? Oh, it's awesome because it's super awesome when I can watch somebody do the form and it's like, all right, this thing that, that we instructed you to do, that's what sets you apart from this other person that you just beat in form. And that feeling of like, yes, I directly played a part in your success is an, is an awesome feeling. It's an addicting feeling. And I love it so much. Nice. It, it is it's pretty awesome. I agree. Did anything surprise you at the tournament? Oh, yes. Um, this was the first time that I had a very diverse ring when it came to different sparring styles. Pretty much everybody, nobody that was in uh, either my A ring or my B ring for sparred similar at all. It was completely different sparring styles, completely different timings and, and different uses of techniques. And so I guess that's something I got to get more used to in the adult divisions is that at this point, everybody has more of their own style, which is cool. So. My next question was going to be, what did you learn from this tournament? So do you have anything else other than that? I learned that I, that I need to do a better job of adjusting on the fly when it comes to sparring. That was a big thing because a lot of times I get set in my ways of we're throwing these techniques, we're doing this, we're doing that, and then if it doesn't work, I have that B and C, but once I get past that, it's kind of, all right, we're going to do what we're going to do what we do and see what happens when I need to have those backup plans past that. What's the difference between doing your form and sparring in class versus doing it in a competition? I think uh, doing it against form and sparring 
or doing form and sparring in class versus competition is it's a mindset shift, especially for form, because uh, when I'm doing my form in class, it's very much I'm picking myself apart in the sense of, ooh, you know, my knee wasn't in the right spot there, that was, that was bad, and you're kind of having these internal thoughts. Whereas when you do it at a tournament or you do it in, in your performance mode, it's very much let's do the best we can do instead of being critical of yourself, you almost mentally praise yourself and it allows you to perform to the best of your ability. And same thing for sparring is that if I'm in, if I'm in training, I'm gonna hold myself to a different standard because I'm gonna be telling myself, I'm like, ooh, probably shouldn't have gotten hit with that. Let's, oh man, dang it. And you just think a little bit more versus when you're in that performance mode, when you're sparring at a tournament, it's like, I can't expect to win every round 7-0. Um, some of them I might win five to three or six to four. You know, it just depends. It's much more random that way. Uh, who are some athletes or martial artists that have inspired you along your competition journey? So I know for Tiger Rock, there's there's three immediate people to come to my, that come to my mind: Britt Harrell from Louisiana, from Kansas now, and then uh, Cody Bushrow from Arizona, and then Benji Gosman from I guess Florida and then Mississippi. And all three of those guys I'm friends with, I'm cool with. I've gotten private lessons with a couple of them, and they're just super big inspirations for me. And in terms of athletes outside of Tiger Rock, uh, Anderson Silva's always been a big inspiration of mine. I always loved his style and his, how loose he was able to be all the time. And then another big inspiration of mine has been uh, Tiger. I always loved the fact that he could lock in and he could, you know, get whatever he needed to do done. And then Kobe, obviously, for obvious reasons. You know, he's the Mamba. It's awesome. All right, so I know you're a big films guy, so you watch a lot of film of yourself, uh, other people also in forms. Uh, you understand the form really well. What are some of the main things you're looking for when you're watching film on yourself and others that help you stand out in the forms competition? Uh, one of the big things that I'm always watching for is the way that you carry yourself when you're doing the form because if you carry yourself when you're doing the form as in, all right, I am the best person out here, I can 100% beat whoever's standing next to me, your form has a different look to it versus if you doubt yourself even just a little bit. And you can tell it by the way somebody stands or by the way how high they hold their head, the look in their eyes, it's small things like that that you notice. Another big thing is how well uh, somebody extends through their moves. That's a big separator that I've seen is that if you're not reaching that full extension on your hand techniques, you're not reaching that full extension on your kicks, you're not gonna beat somebody that is reaching that full extension even if their kicks are a little bit lower or they're not as powerful with their hand techniques. What would you say to someone that has not competed in a tournament yet? I would say that competing in a tournament is absolutely 100% my favorite part of my martial arts journey. It is so much fun. It's great to be able to go engage yourself against other people your rank, other people your size and age. It's also a great way to meet friends. I've met so many people along the way, whether it's from the school in Ridgeland, the school in Hattiesburg, whether it's from people that are eight, 900 miles away. It's just a great way to network and really understand how large the Tiger Rock community is. Have you ever had a competition in which they didn't go the way that you wanted it to? Had to bounce back from that? Oh, 100%. Uh, nationals last year, I had some pretty high expectations coming in, uh, and I did not perform as well as I would have liked to. And so I had to go back and I had to reevaluate, and then the next nationals after that, I won Monroe and I won quite a few medals. And so bouncing back off of a loss, it hurts in the moment, but it's always way better long term than a win because it's going to end up helping you and make you reevaluate a lot of things mentally. Were there any judges that stood out this year? Uh, yes. The, uh, the judge that ran my testing group was Senior Master Reed, or I guess Grandmaster Reed now. And he did an awesome job. He was super high energy. and I, just, I loved every second of the testing. Of my two high-ranked testings, it was 100% my favorite so far. He really brought the energy. And then uh, my A-ring judge was uh, DJ Bailey. And he was super awesome. I loved how intense and locked in he was. Uh, it was just super fun ring to be a part of from start to finish. How does it feel different earning a belt and earning a medal? Ooh, earning a belt is very much, this is the next chapter. I'll say this, I almost separate my two journeys. I have, my, in my mind, I have my, my rank up journey here, and then I have my competition journey here. And my rank up journey is, that, that journey is always gonna go a little bit of a slower pace for me because competition is the biggest, is, is like the biggest thing for me personally. As I rank up, all right, now you are pretty much forced to level up in, this area. So as the rank up gets higher and higher, you're forced to automatically level up in the competition sense. And so they're almost one and the same, but competition is still my favorite. 
So I know I mentioned form is your favorite one, uh, competing in, and then uh, what is your favorite one to watch? So if you were not competing in it at all, if you just wanted to sit down and watch, would it be like XP, would it be form, would it be sparring? It would be sparring 100%. There is nothing better than when you get two people that are fast and that they know what they're doing. That's why the six degrees are some of my favorite co competitors to watch is because it's like you get in there and you watch them spar and it's like, oh my goodness. It's like they know what to throw. They're constantly head on a swivel. And so I would say sparring 100% definitely my favorite thing to watch because you get two people in there that really know what they're doing. and It's awesome. Would you like to see the finale brought back for Fort Worth, Texas? I would 100% like to see the finale brought back for Fort Worth, Texas. You have all these athletes that are out here and they're trying their absolute hardest. They're working their butt off throughout the year to be able to get back. And, you know, our all-star medals in the A bracket, but, you know, now we have eight or nine champions per division. And, and it'd be pretty awesome to be able to whittle that down and get your top three. Anything outside of the tournament in Huntsville that you did memorable? Uh, we went to this taco place a lot, and it was really good. I don't remember what it was called, but uh, I remember it was really good, and I got some pork tacos. It was really good. I went there as well. It was like four times. No idea what the name of it is. It was really good. Kanata? Kanata?